Welcome to Psych Insight, where we view the world through the lens of psychology. If you find this content helpful, please share, like and subscribe to join our community. Thank you for watching. The human mind, with its intricate workings, has always been a source of fascination and mystery. We marvel at the extraordinary feats of intellectual giants, those rare individuals who seem to transcend the boundaries of human potential. Geniuses, in their various domains, leave an indelible mark on the world, shaping our understanding of science, art and the very nature of reality. But what is it that sets these exceptional minds apart? Is genius a product of innate talent, a gift bestowed upon a select few? Or is it cultivated through a complex interplay of environmental factors, opportunities and sheer hard work? This enduring question has sparked countless debates and fueled our relentless pursuit to decipher the origins of genius. We scour the biographies of brilliant minds, searching for clues, for patterns, for some insight into the crucible that forges such extraordinary individuals. We study their childhoods, their education, their social milieu, hoping to unearth the secret formula that unlocks unparalleled intellectual prowess. In this exploration, we often find ourselves drawn to two contrasting narratives, two compelling case studies that illuminate the intricate relationship between environment and the development of genius. On one hand, we have the story of Bobby Fischer, the chess prodigy who emerged from a humble background, a self-taught master who conquered the world of chess with his raw talent and unwavering determination. Fischer's story is a testament to the power of innate ability a case for the notion that genius can blossom even in the face of adversity. On the other hand, we have the story of Robert Oppenheimer, the brilliant physicist who rose to prominence within the hallowed halls of academia, a product of privilege and world-class education who played a pivotal role in shaping the course of human history. Oppenheimer's story underscores the importance of opportunity and access, highlighting the role of a nurturing environment in fostering intellectual growth. By delving into the lives of these two extraordinary individuals, we embark on a journey to unravel the complexities of genius. Through their contrasting stories, we gain a deeper understanding of the multifaceted forces that shape exceptional minds, recognizing that the path to greatness is rarely linear or predictable. The tale of Bobby Fischer and Robert Oppenheimer serves as a powerful reminder that genius can emerge from diverse backgrounds nurtured by a confluence of factors that converge to ignite the spark of brilliance. Born in Chicago in 1943, Bobby Fischer's early life was marked by instability and hardship. Raised largely by his single mother, Fischer's childhood was a far cry from the privileged upbringing of Robert Oppenheimer. He received little formal education, dropping out of high school at the age of 16 to dedicate himself entirely to chess. Fisher's passion for the game was all-consuming, a refuge from the challenges of his daily life. He spent countless hours studying chess books, meticulously analysing grandmaster games and honing his skills through relentless practice. Fisher's talent was undeniable, a raw, untamed brilliance that shone through despite his lack of formal training. He quickly rose through the ranks of American chess, becoming the youngest US chess champion at the age of 14. Fisher's playing style was marked by aggression, tactical ingenuity, and an unwavering will to win. He possessed an uncanny ability to anticipate his opponent's moves, to see through their strategies and exploit their weaknesses with ruthless precision. Fisher's meteoric rise culminated in his legendary match against Boris Spassky in 1972. The match of the century, as it was dubbed, captivated the world as Fisher, the American maverick, challenged the Soviet chess machine. Fischer's victory, a resounding triumph over Spassky, cemented his status as a global icon, a symbol of American exceptionalism in the midst of the Cold War. His story became an inspiration to aspiring chess players worldwide, proof that genius could emerge from the most unlikely of circumstances. Fischer's games were known for their innovative and unpredictable play. While he prepared meticulously, he also maintained an element of unpredictability in his own play. He often deviated from well-trodden paths in openings, surprising his opponents and forcing them into unfamiliar territory. This not only showcased his versatility, 
but also psychologically pressured his opponents to spend more time and mental energy early in the game. Fischer's demeanor and statements often played a role in his psychological strategy. He was known for making bold claims about his abilities and the inferiority of his opponents. His confidence, bordering on arrogance, was intended to intimidate opponents and sow doubt in their minds. For instance, his famous quote, I like the moment when I break a man's ego, reflects his psychological approach to chess. Fischer's ability to play long, grueling games also served as a psychological tool. His excellent physical condition and stamina allowed him to maintain a high level of play even in prolonged games, whereas opponents might falter. This endurance was a strategic asset, particularly in tournaments where the cumulative stress and fatigue could take a toll on his opponents. In sharp contrast to Bobby Fischer's tumultuous upbringing, Robert Oppenheimer's life was one of privilege and opportunity. Born into an affluent family in New York City in 1904, Oppenheimer's intellectual curiosity was nurtured from a young age. He attended the prestigious Ethical Culture School, an institution renowned for its progressive pedagogy and emphasis on intellectual exploration. Oppenheimer excelled in his studies, demonstrating a precocious aptitude for science and mathematics. Oppenheimer's academic journey continued at Harvard University, where he pursued a degree in chemistry. He later moved to Europe to conduct research at the University of Cambridge and the University of Göttingen, immersing himself in the burgeoning field of quantum mechanics. Oppenheimer's brilliance was evident to his professors and peers, who recognized him as a rising star in the world of theoretical physics. Initially, Oppenheimer was a driving force behind the Manhattan Project. Motivated by the fear of Nazi Germany developing an atomic bomb first, he gathered some of the best minds in physics to work at Los Alamos. His dedication to the project was intense, and he was deeply committed to achieving the goal of creating a viable nuclear weapon. However, as the project neared its completion, Oppenheimer's feelings began to shift. The realization of what they had created a weapon of unprecedented destructive power, started to weigh heavily on him. His internal conflict became more apparent after the Trinity test in July 1945, the first successful detonation of a nuclear weapon. Witnessing the immense explosion and the resultant mushroom cloud, Oppenheimer famously recalled a line from the Hindu scripture Bhagavad Gita, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Following the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Oppenheimer's distress deepened as reports of the devastating human and environmental impacts began to surface. He was particularly troubled by the suffering caused by radiation, which was a cruel and lingering aspect of the bomb's aftermath. This included radiation burns, radiation sickness, and long-term health effects that would continue to affect survivors for decades. Oppenheimer's psychological state was affected by his pivotal role in ushering in the nuclear age. He experienced periods of depression and anxiety, reflecting on his responsibilities and the ethical implications of his work. He advocated for international control of nuclear power and spoke against the proliferation of nuclear weapons, even clashing with policymakers and military leaders during the early Cold War period. His efforts to promote a more cautious approach to nuclear arms were seen by some as acts of redemption, driven by his conflicted feelings and the moral burden he carried. The contrasting stories of Bobby Fischer and Robert Oppenheimer highlight the profound influence of environment on the development of genius. Fischer's journey, marked by adversity and a lack of formal education, demonstrates the power of innate talent and unwavering determination. His story serves as a powerful reminder that genius can emerge from the most unlikely of circumstances, fueled by an unquenchable thirst for knowledge and a relentless pursuit of excellence. Oppenheimer's path, on the other hand, underscores the importance of opportunity and access. His privileged upbringing, world-class education, and exposure to leading scientific minds provided him with a fertile ground for intellectual growth. Oppenheimer's story highlights the role of a nurturing environment in fostering genius, providing the necessary resources, mentorship, and intellectual stimulation to cultivate exceptional talent. The stark contrast between Fischer's and Oppenheimer's backgrounds raises important questions about the nature of genius and the factors that contribute to its realization. Does privilege confer an inherent advantage in the pursuit of intellectual greatness? 
Can genius flourish in the absence of opportunity and access? These questions lie at the heart of the ongoing debate about the origins of genius, prompting us to consider the complex interplay of nature and nurture in shaping exceptional minds. The weight of expectations, Fisher's battles on and off the board. While Bobby Fisher's meteoric rise to chess stardom was a testament to his raw talent and determination, his life was also marked by personal struggles and a growing sense of isolation. The weight of expectations, the relentless pressure to maintain his status as world champion, took a toll on Fisher's mental health. He became increasingly reclusive, withdrawing from the public eye and retreating into a world of paranoia and conspiracy theories. Fisher's eccentricities and erratic behaviour became as legendary as his chess prowess. He made outrageous demands during tournaments, engaged in public feuds with opponents and organisers, and alienated many of his former supporters. His genius, once a source of national pride, became intertwined with his troubled persona, a cautionary tale of the fragility of brilliance. Fisher's later years were marked by legal troubles and self-imposed exile. He renounced his American citizenship, lived as a fugitive from US authorities, and made inflammatory statements that further tarnished his reputation. His tragic decline served as a stark reminder that genius, while a gift, does not guarantee happiness or stability. Fisher's story highlights the importance of nurturing not only intellectual brilliance, but also emotional well-being, recognising that the human mind, in all its complexity, requires more than just intellectual stimulation to thrive. Section 6. Oppenheimer's Internal Conflicts, The Burden of Genius Robert Oppenheimer's life, despite its outward success and acclaim, was also marked by internal conflicts and a profound sense of moral responsibility. The creation of the atomic bomb, a project he had spearheaded, weighed heavily on his conscience, casting a long shadow over his later years. Oppenheimer grappled with the ethical implications of his work, the devastating potential of the weapon he had helped bring into existence. Oppenheimer became a vocal advocate for nuclear non-proliferation, urging world leaders to exercise caution and restraint in the face of this new and terrifying power. His outspoken stance against nuclear proliferation, however, drew criticism from some quarters who viewed him as a traitor or a security risk. Oppenheimer's security clearance was revoked in 1954, a controversial decision that tarnished his reputation and cast a pall over his legacy. Oppenheimer's story highlights the complex relationship between genius and morality, the burden of responsibility that often accompanies exceptional intellect. His internal struggles serve as a reminder that genius, while a powerful force for innovation and progress, can also be a source of profound ethical dilemmas. Oppenheimer's life underscores the importance of considering the human consequences of scientific advancements, recognizing that intellectual brilliance must be tempered by a strong moral compass. The ripple effect of genius, lasting impacts. The impact of genius extends far beyond the individual, creating ripples that shape the course of human history, advance our understanding of the world and inspire generations to come. Bobby Fischer's mastery of chess, while ultimately overshadowed by his personal struggles, left an indelible mark on the game, inspiring countless aspiring players and elevating chess to new heights of popularity. His legacy, though complex and controversial, serves as a testament to the enduring power of raw talent and unwavering dedication. Robert Oppenheimer's contributions to science, particularly his role in the Manhattan Project, had a profound and lasting impact on the world. The development of the atomic bomb, while a source of moral anguish for Oppenheimer, ushered in the atomic age, forever altering the geopolitical landscape and raising fundamental questions about the nature of war and the future of humanity. His story highlights the immense power of scientific discovery, the potential for both progress and destruction that accompanies intellectual breakthroughs. The ripple effect of genius is a testament to the interconnectedness of human endeavours, the way in which individual brilliance can shape the course of history, influence cultural trends, and inspire future generations to push the boundaries of human potential. The stories of Fisher and Oppenheimer serve as a powerful reminder that genius, in its various forms, has the power to leave an enduring mark on the world, for better or for worse.